It is Freedom Day indeed, an opportunity to celebrate, but more importantly, an opportun opportunity to reflect. And the road to equality and justice has been paved by the youth of South Africa, and I think their role to play now, today, is more important than ever. And we're going to take a look at the struggles that the youth of today have focused their attention and their considerable might at, and the notion of freedom, because that is different for everybody. And we're joined in studio by Chipo Magombo from the Black Woman Caucus, then Lisa Kanya uh, Matiso from African Climate Alliance, and then Laletu Nogwavu from Africa Unite. Three very powerful voices coming together in a beautiful collaboration today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's crazy to be alive right now. If I'm feeling it, and I've obviously got a broader frame of reference to draw from because I've been through so much of what's going on in the world already, seen it in various pockets, it feels like the world is more polarized and crazy now than ever. Are you hopeful? Are you pessimistic? How are you feeling about where we are, Lilith, right now? Um, of course we are hopeful. We always have to be hopeful. Um, as young people especially, and coming from an organization that works with young people, that's what we try to instill in them, that we have to be hopeful. Where we do you draw that hope from? Um, I think it's mostly from understanding that we are not here just because we are here. People had to fight, people had to be hopeful. So obviously we also have to fight and be hopeful and try and make sure we do the best for the coming generation, um, obviously having so much energy and being young. I, I remember Silo from the Nelson Mandela Foundation reading an excerpt from a letter that Mandela had written seven years into his, his journey on Robben Island, expressing so much hope at the life he was going to live with his daughters. He had created a relationship with his daughters that didn't exist, that was so colourful and rich, but there was so much hope there. And I'm thinking, what hope must he have had at that point in time? Very little. Mm -hmm. The notion of ever getting out of prison must have yeah. seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. How do we then foster that in the people around us? It's a force of will. It's not a gift of by someone gives yeah. you a glimpse of the future. Yeah. You've got to believe that future into existence. Mm -hmm. So when we look at that, um, that future, Lisa Kanya, what does that look like? Or what should that look like to you? Oh, so I'm looking forward to a green future. A future where the um, people are more sustainable than ever. Mm -hmm. A future where... Poverty levels are decreased, yeah. um, a future where people are equal, a future where people um, are treated equally and they do the right things. They, 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 they fight for green energy, they fight for um, green lives. We've been waiting for a baseline for artificial intelligence because I think the problem, why are we so terrified is we know that if we had to actually do an honest reflection, we're not doing okay. So we, we, if someone else stepping in to do the job better, <laughs> let's put that down as the set of rules that will govern AI that's going to govern us in the future because that's not born out of a notion of what we want to have, it's what we need to have to okay. continue our survival. I'm looking at three young activists, which, and as much as I want to be pessimistic about the world right now, it's impossible when I meet people like you. So what is the role of an activist now in this space? And that's going to take many shapes and guises, I know. But there is a common thread. What do you think that is? Um, so for me, I mean, I'm, I'm working for an organization that's based on feminist uh, movement and activism. And so that already, I know, has many connotations in your yeah, mind. A bias. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, right now, if we look at how... Um, activism is today. It's creative. It's innovative. It's it's TikTok. Yeah. It's education. It's helping people, um, and specifically with the organization I'm working for, we work with people in informal settlements that don't know the word feminism, but they experience it through their lives. Mm. So it's like really helping people bridging the gaps between the individuals that are experiencing these 
injustices, this marginalization, and people that can make the decisions to make a difference, that people that can actually do something about it. It's about linking those people and making sure something is done about it. Practicality. Yeah. But I think we often forget when we politicize something, we forget about the practical role that we can play. Yeah. I believe being really old, Everything is socioeconomic. Everything stems from desperation or a need yeah. to want to move out of that space so much. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling we are missing an angle that you guys might have the lens to. And you said TikTok. I'm going to talk to you about how TikTok <laughs> might have changed the world for the better, people. <laughs> um, but there is an opportunity, a platform. We belong to a global village. Mm -hmm. Kids all over the world are connected now more than ever before. There is an opportunity in that. But we still have to fight for freedom rights every day. It didn't happen then, it's not going to happen, it's now, it's yeah. now when it happens. Yeah.